leadership for me is your ability to to bring a team together and be able to to reach your team goals as a unified team you know and more than just reach the goals um, reach further than just what the goal is and at the end of the day you must still be on talking terms with your people you must your people you must your people must still be able to relate to you irrespective of the fact that you you know you guys reach that goal and penultimately that is leadership for me your your ability to reach goals and still have a good relationship with people and 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 your your ability to see be beyond just that goal you know if you can, if you have a team goal and you can reach beyond that and you still have good relationships with your with your team irrespective of who that team is with its you know a family goal and, and you're the leader of that family or you know you have a country goal and you're the president or irrespective of of, of the role or, or the function but if you're able to do that and still have good relationships um i i, I see i see you as a good leader you know that, that for me is good leadership My name is Letitia Wardle. Um, I'm from Wentworth in Durban. And as far as nicknames is concerned, only my father gave me a nickname and not many people know the nickname. So I have a nickname, but it's a family household nickname. <laughs> and it's Monkey Magic. I would say that I'm, I'm a mother. That that's and that was a big change in my life. Um, I'm a I'm a daughter to my dad, um, and I'm a daughter-in-law and and all those kind of things. But also I'm a planner. I work as a maintenance planner. When I was in high school, the the term planner was never even something that we knew about. Um, in high school, I would say around about Standard 7 or so, is in the late Standard 7s, that time we had Standard 7s, is when I realized that I needed to do maths and science. I needed to do something like that because I was having a crazy ball of a time in school. I was doing typing. <laughs> Typing is a subject, home economics and, and that kind of thing. But no clear direction, you know, young and just wanting to enjoy high school. And going into standard eight, I changed into doing maths and science. I wanted to study medicine, came out of school and at that time UDW was going through some heavy riots and, and UKZN as well. It was through some transitioning time in the country as well. And one, my mother was not comfortable with all of that, and I couldn't go. I remember sitting at, on UDW stairs and just bawling my heart out. Um, and then I shortly applied to UKZN for BSc Engineering. I was accepted, but at that time finances weren't um, where we needed to be, you know, and so I couldn't. Um, fortunately, through various applications, I applied for nursing and all kinds of things, you know. I got accepted to SAPREF to do a, a learnership and the, when we got there, we were told that it would be a chemical learnership, mechanical and instrumentation. And we uh, did a test trial for a year, we, we were learners for a year and after that, based on your performance, you would be placed accordingly. Fortunately for me, after the the year, I did pretty well in the in the year that I did, and I had a choice of where I'd like to go. So I I didn't just go into just the choice that you know was given to me. I I opted to go into electrical, and opportunity came in there. So I studied. I became an electrical 
princess. It was a difficult journey. I didn't expect it to be as difficult as it was. Um, one, being the first female electrical apprentice they had had. And it comes with, with all kinds of territory, you know, where you are insecure about yourself because people have this huge expectation from you now to perform and you don't know if you want to perform yourself, you know, then <laughs> you don't know you, you know, you're still finding you out, who you are out, you're still identifying yourself, you've got all sorts of insecurities and you're, you're in this huge engineering environment and, and it's an oil refinery and yeah, it's a... I qualified, I did my trade test, I qualified, and I opted to leave. Um, one, I, I, I always was fortunate in having mentors, and one of the mentors that I had had said to me that the best thing for me to do is to move on from here. Not that uh, the company where I was at is a bad company or anything like that, but his advice to me was that I would always be seen as a junior simply because I came up the ranks. So after my trade test, I'd left and um, I went on to lecture. That lasted all of three months. <laughs> oh my gosh, that wasn't... Um, it's, my character um, does not allow me to do That's not a job for me at all. So it was a very good company. Um, you know, I got to the company and they had all sorts of training applications. I was actually an electrical trainer for students that would be coming to do their trade tests. And that was interesting, but my personality did not allow me to continue with that job and I had to move on. I was employed at Engine Refinery as an electrician and that was great. I mean, oh, it was awesome. I worked as an electrician, I think, for four years, and then I were I I transgressed then into planning. I, I stumbled upon upon this career called planning when I was at Engine Refinery, and I became a trainee and then a, a planner, and I'm still in planning. Mine was a bit different, we, I was a bit older, okay, I am a bit older, so there was no learnerships then, it was apprenticeships, <laughs> so nowadays they've got learnerships, but back then we had apprenticeships and um, there was a practical side to it, um, where you went to go and learn the theory application so that you would be able to do your trade test, and the pre-qualifying criteria for you to apply for your trade your traces back then was matric or an N3. Um, so I, in my fourth year um, via the company, they applied for me, my application for trade test and, and you had to go through different practical phases learning um, different aspects of, of the actual trade, electrical trade and there's phase one that's what I went through phase one phase two and phase three phase three is basically your last stage where you basically like a third year or fourth year apprentice and you should be at that stage almost ready or those that are a bit advanced ready to do your trade test I was ready I applied and I did my trade test after my third phase of, of study on the theory side um, the company had sent us to do our in-course training that's like in one in two and three but i had started off with in four because obviously i was already matriculated so there was no need to do in one in two and three i started off with in in four and i finished off with in six electrical trade the courses for the national diploma are electrical engineering um, power machines back then, um, electronics, um, and that was the end of that phase of my study in terms of just before I qualified as such. 
because you never considered, even though you were in N6, you were never really qualified because you didn't have the 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 training, the actual hands-on training, on-site kind of training. And obviously, after that, you you've got to apply for um, your diploma only when you have the actual site quality, the site experience. And I think that's like two years now. It's, uh, it's about two years, blocks up to about two years, so many hours of um, training. Shortly after that, um, when I was at Engine, I studied further. I did um, a diploma in project management. Um, I started a BCom degree and never finished it. <laughs> yeah, I've got like my second year in, in BCom um, financial management. That's as far as qualifications go. I've done a few small courses like Primavera for planning specifically, because that's what I do. I'm, I'm a planner. Um, yeah. Um, as I said, I did an apprenticeship at Sapref. Um, that was good. That was really a, a good experience because that exposed me to the engineering world. You know, coming from the you don't really know when people say you're gonna you're gonna do an electrical apprenticeship. Like, what is that? What do you do? Uh, do you play with wires? Like, what is, <laughs> what is it? Um, so, uh, yeah, I did an apprenticeship at Sapref, and when I qualified, I moved on to become a trade test lecturer. So those students that were coming to do trade test, I would do trade test prep with them, and um, that wasn't something that I enjoyed doing even though it was a very good company um, I would recommend people going to that company any day um, but it wasn't for me the job wasn't for me in terms of my own personal growth and development so I joined engine refinery shortly after that within three months of that and I joined them as an electrician um, because I qualified in a petrochemical environment, um, in fact I've got a petrochemical crisis. I worked as an electrician um, for four years that entailed high voltage and low voltage electrical um, work. We, I worked on switch gears and, and motors and stuff like that. Um, I worked standby as well, that wasn't nice. Um, that was for for the full four year period that I was in electrical, and then I then later became a planner. Um, I applied for the position and I got it. Trained for a bit, studied Primavera, did intensive SAP training um, because of the systems that Engine uses. They use the SAP system. So you've got to have intensive SAP training. So I've, I've done quite a bit of training on SAP. Um, and then I became a planner. Um, the refinery is divided into various sections. So um, I've been in planning for five years. I've basically planned in all the areas within the refinery. Um, we do turnaround planning. We do mini shutdown planning. We do um, minor project planning, we do day-to-day -day planning. So currently I'm the maintenance planner and my role entails day-to-day um, -day maintenance planning and that would be we have a maintenance crew that takes care of the day-to-day -day activity on the plant so when the plant is not shut down we have to maintain the plant while it's online and we would plan um, specific planned maintenance routines and that would be like we've got pumps we've got motors we've got those kinds of equipment and people service those equipments now I want to use as layman's terms as possible so we was so though we plan for the mechanical fitter to do specific maintenance on compressors on pumps on um, 
in vessels on, on that kind of thing and then also we've got other disciplines like electrical and instrumentation and they would do routines on instruments that um, either monitor temperatures on certain equipment or measure flow on certain equipment so we would we would as a planner I, I look at the amount of resources that we have available to us and plan those resources for that week, for bi-weekly, for monthly, for quarterly, annually. And not only plan those resources, those resources sometimes require other resources like cranage, like um, trucks or whatever whatever additional resources those resources would require. As a planner, it would be my job to plan that, to get uh, material for them to execute what they need to do. It will be my job to do that. Also, every, every company works in a budget and it's at our company the planners also work with a budget very closely we don't have a, um, a, a full financial team like how most companies do so the onus is on the planners to monitor expenditure and to work specifically with the engineer in terms of this is the budget that you are given for the year and to do this specific maintenance on the plants this is the, the funding in which to do it and we also do shutdowns very similar to that but shutdowns are where a specific plant is not exactly online it is part of a plant is offline and then as a planner i would plan the resources plan the material plan the necessary contracts because sometimes a contract is required for instance a a welding contract a contract is called in to do a specific job and then that job is contracted out it's not necessarily done by internal resources so as a planner you would you would manage external resources as well as internal resources as well as support resources for that maintenance um, outage as well as most importantly will always be the funding that's that's always important So in five years time, um, hopefully I can have my own company in terms of planning consultancy and as well as planning training. I'm very passionate about my job. I'm very passionate about planning and I see it as a skill that this country needs and not just a matter of many students go out there and they say, well, I finished matric now, I want to do P6 and I'm a planner. That's, you're not a planner. You're just someone who has done a program so I I would like to, to have this company that where people come in and, the, and they learn holistically the the skill and, and what it means and and this full service that you can offer as a planner